Local for you. NBC4 at 6 starts now. Lottery jackpots are climbing to new records, and the Ohio Lottery benefits from the hype. Its profits go toward education, but NBC4 investigates follow the money and found that in some cases it went straight into the private sector. Good evening to everybody, and thanks for joining us tonight. Six, I'm Carrie Charles. And I'm Jennifer Bullock in for Colleen Marshall. NBC4 investigates Jamie Ostroff has been following the money with the Ohio Lottery. You say the money isn't necessarily going where Ohioans may expect. Right, I think a lot of parents might believe that, okay, we just had a $2 billion yeah. Powerball right. jackpot. That means more money to my local school district where I pay taxes and maybe have a child who attends. Right. Well, it's uh, not quite. You would think that Columbus, the largest school district in Ohio, would get the most money from lottery profits, but you would be off by millions of dollars. We have been seeing, again, those record lottery jackpots in recent years, including that $2 billion Powerball this month. And this is because Powerball and Mega Millions raised the prices of tickets and increased the numbers to choose from, making it harder to win those jackpots. Hype surrounding these monster, monster jackpots is a great way to sell tickets. And thanks in part to those sales, Ohio's Lottery Profits Education Fund received its largest payment from the Lottery Commission ever this year. I went through that fund line by line and found millions of dollars going into the hands of corporations. Whether you're trying your luck at a scratch off or a mega millions jackpot. So a portion of all of the lottery sales is always going to education. After operating costs and prize payouts, Ohio Lottery spokeswoman Danielle Babb says about 24 cents from every dollar you spend on lottery games is profit. It goes straight into the Lottery Profits Education Fund. Where that money goes, how it's doled out, is, is not done by us, it's done by the Department of Education. That means we can track it. I sifted through the entire $1.4 billion fund for fiscal year 2022. In addition to local school districts, STEM schools and some vocational schools were hundreds of charter schools. Individual schools receiving millions from the fund, while some of the state's largest districts got less. For example, Kip Columbus, a charter school with more than 2,000 students, according to its website, received more than $12 million from the Lottery Profits Education Fund in fiscal year 22. Columbus City Schools, which serves more than 47,000 students, received just shy of $6 million, less than half of KIPP's payment to the state's largest school district. KIPP declined my request for an interview. General Assembly generally is not deciding at an individual school district level that Columbus City Schools is going to get X million and uh, Dublin is going to get Y million and Reynoldsburg is going to get a different amount. Aaron Rausch is the chief of there budget and school funding with the Ohio Department of Education. There is a, you know, larger school funding formula, though, that the that the General Assembly does, you know, vote on, approve. It's codified in state law. He says the lottery fund is about 10 to 12 percent of the state's entire education budget and that the school funding formula is applied to that budget as a whole. The formula includes factors like the number of students and where schools draw their revenue. How do local property taxes factor into how traditional public schools are funded versus how um, community schools are funded? Columbus City Schools derives you know, revenue from both state and local sources. A place like Kip Columbus is only generating state foundation funding. They do not receive any local property tax dollars. Schools in more affluent districts receive a smaller share from the state, Roush says. For example, Upper Arlington, home to more than 6,300 students, received $366,000 in lottery profit funds in fiscal year 22. But critics of charter schools, also known as community schools, question whether those institutions should even be part of the equation. We've created this inefficient, ineffective um, a privatization system uh, that, that is really harming the, the public sector. Bill Phyllis is a former assistant state superintendent. He now leads the Ohio Coalition for Equity and Adequacy of School Funding. Phyllis points to the fact that many charter schools are run by nonprofit or for profit corporations. They're private um, uh, they're operators, management operators. 
are, are not subject to uh, public records requests. There's really no accountability for the use of the, the public funding, and there's no accountability in terms of how, how well these young people are achieving. Advocates for charter schools, like the Buckeye Institute's Greg Lawson, argue the exact opposite. I guess I would push back on the notion that uh, there isn't any accountability at all. Under Ohio law, charter schools are considered public schools. That means they're held to certain academic standards and audited by the state. Charter schools get closed frequently, actually. Now. And that's hard for students. It is, but I, I would say this, if a charter school is not doing what it's supposed to be doing, then it should be shut down. Now, some schools that received lottery profits in fiscal year 22 appear to have closed or at least rebranded. For example, the Academy of Arts and Sciences in Lorain County received more than $560 million. According to the Auditor of State's website, though, it hasn't been audited since 2017. It is also not listed on the Department of Education's Directory of Community Schools, though officials there do tell me it changed its name and moved to Erie County. A phone number linked to the Academy of Arts and Sciences reaches Lorraine Preparatory Academy, which received another $1.2 million from the fund this past fiscal year. It, they were both owned, those schools, by a for-profit parent company based in Georgia. They operate multiple charter schools across Ohio. That company actually placed into a court receivership in 2014 because it wasn't paying its debts. Carrie. Wow. Jamie, thanks.